Are you wondering how to use a steam iron properly? If so, then make sure to keep on watching because in today's video, I'll walk you through the 10 essentials you need to know to get you started the right way. For the best tips and advice on creating your own patterns, as well as becoming a fashion designer, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos every week. Hey designers, my name is Kim Dubois. I'm a fashion designer by trade, and I was trained in Italy, where I specialized in pattern making and garment construction. Today, I'll share with you not only tips that I've learned from working within the fashion industry, but also tools that I found indispensable. But before we get started, you need to know that there are two main variations of the steam iron. The household steam iron, which is commonly used, and the professional one that comes with a separate steam boiler tank, allowing you to steam for longer periods of time. I've personally been using the professional steam iron since I decided to take the path to pattern making seriously. The one that I'm currently using is a Dupre steam iron that I purchased at Costco last year for around $250. And for your information, this steam lasts up to 90 minutes of ironing per fill up, which is plenty for new designers. So without further talk, let's move on to the first essential, which is to sort your garments and fabrics according to the recommended ironing temperature. The different settings are usually well indicated on your iron, and most of the time they are nylon, silk, wool, cotton, and linen. If you have any doubts on what your garment is made of, simply read the label. It usually indicates, first, if you can iron the garment, and if so, at which temperature. This quick process will make your life easier as you will be able to iron each category together. Number two, use an ironing board. If possible, always use an ironing board. Not only because it is made for ironing, but also because it helps absorb the heat and moisture, and as a result, prevent the garment or fabric from damaging. Alternatively, for those who don't have an ironing board, you can use a flat surface, like a table or a wide countertop, and simply use a cotton towel beneath your garment or fabric to absorb the steam and obviously protect your furniture. Number three, the water. By far the best water to use is one that does not contain minerals. This is why I highly recommend using distilled water which is mineral free and as a bonus can easily be purchased at your local grocery store. When looking at the main benefits, the answer is simple. Using unfiltered water can cause calcium buildup on the fabric post ironing and even cause stains, which generally is not a great idea when working with luxury textiles. In regards to your iron, distilled water prevents hard water buildup in the iron, and you've probably seen it before, there are the small mineral deposits that looks like sea salt, also called lime scale, who could over time collect and clog the inside of your steam iron, and as a result, severely damage it. So my advice, only use distilled water. Number four, refill the steam boiler tank. When it comes to filling up the water, for a household iron, I would recommend using a cup with a funnel spout. And when filling up the professional iron, simply use a utility funnel. As a takeaway tip, when your iron is heated, always wait until the tank is cooled down before refilling it with water. And to help it cool down faster, I recommend removing the cap. Lastly, for those who love being efficient, Simply always make sure to top it up before starting to work on your sewing projects. Number five, set the correct heat temperature. The temperature of your iron needs to always be set up according to the temperature suggested on the wash care label of your garment or by the category of fabric. Before you start ironing, give your iron a few minutes to heat up to make sure it gets enough time to turn the water into steam because if the temperature is low, it may leak or drip, 
which can cause water spotting. This is why I always test on a cotton cloth before moving on to the real fabric. Finally, as a takeaway tip, if you set a different heat temperature, always wait a few minutes before using your iron. Number six, how to iron. Seems easy, I know. But still, lots of people need to hear that one. When ironing, if you move your iron in circular motions, it can cause the fabric of your garments to damage and stretch out. This is why clothes are usually ironed in an up and down motion and fabric following the selvage of the fabric or perpendicular to it. If your garment has pleats, work on their natural fold for best results. And if your fabric has wrinkles, with love and patience, spread some steam and slowly move your iron. Now, number seven, protect the delicate fabrics. So again, make sure to always double check the wash care label of your garment before you use steam to make sure you can. Take note that when ironing delicate material, such as chiffon, georgette, and even silk satin, I always place a cotton cloth between the garment and the iron to give it an extra layer of protection. As I mentioned before, direct exposure can cause the garment or fabric to damage. This is why I recommend using at number eight, a steam iron protection cover pad at all time. This product is a must and can easily be purchased online. The steam iron cover pad has two goals. The first one is to protect the iron from heating high temperature, which can cause burnt fabrics. And the second one is to help the heat being heavenly distributed. I honestly wouldn't use my iron without it. Now we're moving on to my favorite tool when ironing. Let's talk about number nine, the sleeve board. By definition, a sleeve ironing board is a mini ironing board that is specifically designed to iron the sleeve of a shirt as well as dresses. When creating patterns, this tool is a necessity because it is just the right size for pressing a seam. Also, as a plus, the shape allows you to press darts with ease and difficult angles you might encounter on a garment. Definitely, another must. Finally, number 10, hang after ironing. Once you're done with steam ironing, make sure to always hang the garment carefully on a cloth hanger to allow natural hair drying. Because if you leave it laying out casually on a chair or a couch, there are chances of drying with wrinkles. And the same goes with fabric. Hang it as well if possible after ironing and when it's time to use it, simply do some retouch if needed. Okay, designers, if you have any further questions or even want to share your tips and tricks, then make sure to leave it in the comment section of this video. Also, for those new to pattern making and still struggling to understand the different steps of the process, I created a nine step pattern making framework to help you get started on your journey that you can simply download in the description box below this video. If this video was helpful, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button so I know to make more videos like this. Keep on creating and I will see you in the next video.